Hello everyone, welcome to the next episode on Anubhav Learning Series. In this demo video, we will talk about how to debug your OData services which are providing the necessary functionality and the data to your Fiori applications. This demo video has been brought to you by Anubhav Learning Series, one of the finest learning series on the YouTube to get you always the free and latest content. If you want to subscribe to our UI5 and Fiori training with OData services, please feel free to visit our website anubhavtrainings.com. With that, let's get started. In this session, we will see how can we troubleshoot an OData service which is being called from a Fiori app. Now, if you want to learn or do this troubleshooting, there are a couple of prerequisites you should already know. As a SAP UI5 consultant, or as an ABAP consultant, you must be aware of these following techniques to be able to troubleshoot the issues. You should have basic idea of core ABAP programming with concepts of data dictionary and internal tables. You should know Fiori OData integrations. You should already also know the concepts of DPC and MPC class with the gateway system. Also, you should know the concepts of association with SAP OData service using Fiori. With that, let's quickly start once again with quick basics. So as you all know, our users will be using our Fiori applications with a browser running in their computers. And from there, from the client client machine, a call will be sent to the SAP server. All right. So that's what will happen. Typically, you will see this is the scenario across. So there, there will be your users who will be talking to your client machine and that's where there's a browser which is running and this browser is then sending a request to an SAP server where OData service is implemented. Now once this request is received there is a implementation call, called DPC extension class where you have the implementation of your OData services which will receive the request so this is called request and then you will get a response back. So as a result of that is your some kind of above program executes some kind of logic which gets executes it fetches the data from the database it, it does all the necessary processing which it's supposed to do it uh, does the database read and look up and whatsoever and finally a response will be sent to the client. Now the couple of challenges while you do this debugging. The first challenge here is you need to identify which is the OData service your Fiori app is using. At times you may also want to debug a standard Fiori app or a custom Fiori app. So the couple of questions which we will be answering quickly here is find out which is the OData service which is used by app. Service name. The second thing which we need to identify is find out which is the the OData project and the class in which code is written. The third thing is you need to identify the entity which is used to provide or which is being used to provide data which you are looking for and then of course you need to navigate there now the second bigger challenge which will come is your users your business users testing the app with their own business user let's say in my company there is a user called Jack who's the business user in SAP system now, when Jack runs the application, Fury application, with his user, the Jack Jack's authorizations are being used, and he gets some additional data, because at times you may have business logic, which runs according to your role, according to your authorizations in the system, uh, at times according to your uh, your organization. Sometimes, for example, if I'm reading a sales order that I, it will only show me the sales order for the sales organization my user is assigned to, correct? So when you run with your developer user, you may not get the same data what Jack is getting. So 
the user is testing the app or using the app with the business user with a business user authorization say Jack here now when a developer connects to the system maybe they connect with the user with their user let me name this user as a dev so I'm connecting as a developer with my dev user but Jack is connecting with his business user now there may be a discrepancy sometimes you may see that a user is using an application and he is getting some data but when you open the same application you not get any data because that user has a special authorization that user is assigned to some cost center profit center sales organization according to that system behaves and loads the data now this becomes an another challenge in terms of especially the backend debugging because you are not Jack and Jack is not you so you need to make sure that when you're testing you use the Jack's user or Jack will probably run the Fury app at front of you, you sit together with Jack and Jack has to run the Fury app and you at the same time log in with your development user or developer user to debug Jack's call now this is going to be very interesting how do we achieve this so these are all the, the four things which we will find out quickly step by step so let's do the first thing find out the service name so I'm gonna go back and first check what's my app name so we will just go back to the fury app this is our fury app and now as I can see I just click on some data and you see this supplier data is not coming and just go there you see supplier data is missing it's not coming see guys yeah that's the bug we need to fix now this is the fury app which your user is telling you they've opened a ticket on your name and they're saying something is wrong now the first thing is you need to find out the app name so what how do you do that very easy just press F12 go to sources and then you will find here uh, expand this and you can see this app name Z debug demo in most of the cases your UI 5 developer if you are just working in the back end as an app developer maybe your UI 5 developer will give this information handy for you right away but in case you need to find out you get to go to F12 go to sources and then you can check the app name here Z debug demo so you need to then check out this in the web ID and stuff like that typically it's always good to have an all-rounder knowledge both back end and front end that's when you become a champion uh, just in case if you don't have that's okay ask your UI developer to tell you the service name straight away okay or you are already working as a developer in the team you know which is the service but suppose I found out the app name step one done now I open that app in the web IDE and then in in the web ID when I open this fury project I'll go to manifest JSON in the manifest JSON if you scroll down a little bit you will see data sources section and under that you will find the O data service name here you see this is our O data service name so just is skip the underscore SRV part skip that take the first part before underscore SRV copy that go back to the uh, SAP GUI system and go to SE24 and now type here ZCL underscore your O data project name and voila what you see is the suggestions is already telling you the classes which are there in the system for implementation so of course it will always look at DPC extension so go inside say display and now you can see here my methods so we we are seeing a bug related to supplier so and this is again your your knowledge related to the OData and depth of understanding of your functional knowledge at the app level will help you to find out where the root cause is this is a problem with supplier data so obviously there is something wrong related to supplier and since it's just getting single supplier data because you can't see here a table you see a single supplier most probably the issue is with the suppliers that get NTT method so I'm going to go inside and what I'll do is I just put up a breakpoint so always remember you have to put an external breakpoint here just click on that and now I assume that my breakpoint will hit correct I assume my breakpoint will hit let's give a try I'm gonna go back to our app and I'm gonna select a product and you see it loaded that product data on the right side it's it's just doing it but it's not triggering my breakpoint okay it's not triggering my breakpoint why why it's not triggering the big point because at this point of time this app is logged on by your business user let me see what is the username 
So we'll go to F12 and refresh again. And now you can see it's just reloading everything. We will go to the very first call, which is Fury Launchpad.html call. And now you can see a response here. And you see this content area. This is quite important for us. So what you do is take out this content area. So this is basically a hex code, uh, which is which system has created. And I'm going to take this complete part, copy this and open a notepad file so this is a quick trick usually you will it's very easy to know the username because your business user will tell you the system username in the ticket which you can use to log in or sit with them to log in you will know anyway the username but it's still uh, just in case you want to find out you can do that so i've got this hex code copy to my notepad file and just do a control f and search for full name okay and now you can find here the full name and you can just make out that this is the full name of the user and very next to that you can see here the user ID. So this is the actual ID system, SAP system ID about user ID, which is used to connect. So it's MOV5. So the user, your Jack is actually MOV5, is connected with MOV5. And what is our user as a developer? We go back and we can just check it here. Our developer user is uh, MOV28. So both are different. So mob 5 is your business user with which user is using the app and mob 28 is the is the user which is uh, the the user uh, which we are now debugging the developer user and that's the difference that's the reason why the debugger is not triggering so what do we do we can just go back to the utilities settings and now we have an option to choose debugging and now you can actually go ahead and change uh, the username in the debugging option here in the above environment. So you can see here the user for which you want to do the debugging is currently set to my current user mob 28. But now here I have to use my business user, which is Jack. And in this case, the Jack is nothing but your uh, your mob 5, which is used by Fury app. I just set this up, say OK. Now system prompts me, would you like to remain, uh, keep those uh, breakpoints also active for the new user? Yeah, I say yes, please do that. And that's it guys. Let's go back as a business user for the Fury app. And now I am just going to click on another item to see here the value. So I click on another item here. It's still not triggering the breakpoint. Yes, it is triggering the breakpoint. There you go system has hit my breakpoint in fact multiple because i clicked on multiple items just remove them and i just keep only one and you see this is calling my supplier said get entity wow so as an ABAP developer now it's in your control completely to check what's going on so i do f6 and you see the first statement sub rc is is four that's okay let's move on it goes to the else part let's check the it key tab content it has one record fine i press f6 and what i see still the sub rc is four which means there is some problem with this read statement it's trying to read some value from the key tab table with product key as the name of the key field let's investigate further so it's searching product key let's check the table and oh wow what you see here is interesting uh, it's the name of the property is product id but what you are looking is product key so very simple yeah of course that's the reason why further on it's just going ahead and causing an issue so basically this bp id is probably be empty now yeah just go inside you see bp id is empty as a result of that this function module further provides an empty and it moves an empty record and that's why you get an empty so simply i go back and it's time to fix so I go for change and change this to id remember it's case sensitive make it id capital and activate and now i will go back to our fury app once again and i'll click another product to hit my breakpoint one more time so remember you don't have to reload your fury app because it's a change in the back end it's a rest protocol so every time um, you click on a fury app do an action a new request gets created and it will be firing it to the server so it's a request response architecture so you don't have to refresh reload your fury app as long as you're not changing gs code in the fury app just click on it it should hit now my breakpoint once again with the latest code being reflected and let's see 
Yes, you see our code is reflecting here, the one which we changed immediately. I just say F6, F6, it checks now the T key tab. And let's see the sub RC is now zero. Super. F6, it calls the function, first function. And let's see if it has got BPID. Yeah, there you go. That's a BPID. And it calls another BAPI. And it should map this. And I say F8. It's okay. Please continue. And wow, there you go. You can see your data is popping up on the UI. I will just quickly go back and disable the breakpoint, select and disable. And now it's time to just do a random clicks and check if it's loading correctly. Oh, awesome, guys. Thank you so much for debugging practices for helping me to debug my OData service. Hope you enjoyed this session. If you think, guys, this session helped you, please do like, subscribe this channel and hit the bell icon so that I can get you more videos like this. For detailed training on SAP UI5, Fiori, Gateway, OData, Fiori Security, Launchpad, Launchpad Designer, Theme Designer, Fiori S4 HANA, as for HANA technical, CDS views, AMDP, ADBC, HANA, HANA native development, S4 HANA cloud. Please do contact us on anubavtrainings.com. We are there to help you from scratch. This session was mainly for the people who have taken the training already from us. They're already comfortable with the concepts of SAP UI5 and OData. So this is what uh, will help them to understand. If you already know it, of course, you can subscribe to this channel for free videos like this and it will help you to learn more. With that, Anubav signing out. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.